Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a life raft. We'll look at why life rafts are designed the way they are. We'll look at some of their defining features, some of the accessories, and then we'll have a look at some of the equipment that they carry. Before I go too far into the video, I just want to say that this video was produced in collaboration with Casual Navigation. So if you do want to learn a bit more about life rafts after watching this video, then check out some of the links in the video description area and there you'll find a link to Casual Navigation's life raft video where you can learn how a life raft is launched, where you're likely to see life rafts and why we use life rafts in the first place instead of just using life boats. So here is our life raft. I'll give you a little spin. You can see that it's got a rectangular shape. Now the benefit of having a rectangular shape is that it allows you to strap the life rafts or tie them together if there are multiple life rafts in the water. You'll see that the life raft has a bright color. The reason it has a bright color is because we want our life raft to be easy to see from the air or from another ship that might be floating around nearby. Remember that if you're in a life raft, it's most likely that your ship or your yacht or your boat or whatever has just sunk. So now people are looking for you, hopefully, and you want to make it as easy as possible for them to find you. And that's why you have the bright color. And it's also why you'll often see life rafts with a rectangular or octagonal or hexagonal shape, because you can then tie them together, make a larger object in the ocean, a big bright group of objects together, which is easier to spot, rather than just a tiny dot or a single life raft. And believe me, if you've ever been to sea, you'll realize just how big the ocean is. It is difficult for people to spot you, even if they know roughly where to look for you. On the underside of the life raft, we've actually got these four bucket shaped items. You see one in the back, two, three, and four. Each of these buckets has large holes in the top, and what's going to happen is when your life raft goes into the water, they're going to fill up with water pretty quick. And the weight of that water is going to lower the center of gravity of the life raft. And this reduces the likelihood of it flipping over in bad weather or capsizing. If we come over to this side here, you can see we've got this white cord. If you're swimming over to the life raft, you'll be able to put your foot or your knee on this cord. You'll grab hold of this strap here and you'll pull yourself in to the life raft through the entrance here. Ideally, you will not get wet before you enter the life raft. But unfortunately, if the ship or the boat or the yacht or whatever has just sunk, it might have happened quite quickly and you might need to swim over to the life raft and climb in. This is actually more difficult than you might imagine. And it's quite useful if somebody's already inside and they can help pull you in. But as I say, ideally, you won't get wet before you go into the life raft. You may be able to board the life raft and then launch it. That's typical for larger life rafts. They actually use a David for this purpose. But even for the smaller ones, there are a lot of regulations defining how life rafts are designed. These regulations are in a book called SOLAS, or the Safety of Life at Sea Convention. And they actually have rules even concerning how strong the base or the inside of the life raft has to be in order that people can jump out from a certain elevation and land on the inside of the life raft without the base or the floor of the life raft giving way. I'm not really sure if this piece would qualify as a deck. I'm just going to call it a floor. You'll notice that we've got one of these tubes on the inside. There are actually two inflatable tubes. You can see a lower one here and the upper one here. That's the one we just looked at. These two tubes are fully redundant. That means that if one of them was to be damaged and the tube would gradually deflate, then the other tube would be capable of keeping the life raft afloat with all of the people inside. That is definitely a good safety feature to have. If we come over to the left side of the screen, you can see we've got two red circular items. These are actually overpressure relief valves. And these are installed because you have a CO2 canister that's used to inflate the life raft initially. When you inflate the life raft, you may have a bit of excess pressure in the CO2 canister or the CO2 pressure bottle. These simply look like dive cylinders 
similar to what scuba divers use. This excess pressure has to be vented in order that we don't damage our tubes. And we're going to vent that excess pressure through these two valves here. Remember there's one valve per tube because the tubes are fully independent. There's also an additional valve inside here for the canopy support. That would be that one there, which is also independent of the other tubes. If we go back outside for a moment. You can see we've got some markings on the life raft. We've got the manufacturer's name, that's Savri, which indicates to me that this is probably the best life raft that you can purchase for the money. It's pure quality. And if we come over to the left hand side, we've got something that says 6PERS. That indicates that the life raft is made for six persons. We've got some reflective tape that's been installed around various sides of the life raft. You can see there's another two pieces here. Another big piece here. And again two pieces here. These simply make the life raft easier to spot. Even at night time when people shine a torch or a searchlight out, these will reflect the light, which will help rescue searchers to identify and locate you. There's also a light on the top of the life raft. You have this on at night. You'll turn it off during the day in order to save batteries. It's at the highest point of the life raft because that's the point, once again, that's going to be easiest to see if people are searching for you. If we come down, you'll see there's another light on the inside. This is purely for comfort. Maybe you need to read at night or find something in the life raft, in which case you'll turn the light on. When you're not using it, once again, you'll turn it off in order to conserve your batteries. Notice that there is a tube on this side of the life raft. This tube is actually designed so that you can capture rainwater and funnel it inside into containers. Let's back up and go outside again. You can see we've got this V shape on the back of our life raft. This V shape is actually slightly separated from our canopy. So rainwater will land on the canopy, drip down and then come down here. And this is occurring on both sides of the V and the rainwater will be funneled into that tube. It will then run out of the tube and you can put it into a container. So this is a nice way to capture rainwater or drinking water. This item is arguably one of the most important items on the life raft because without water, you're not going to last very long at all. The record number of days to have lived or survived within a life raft is about 133. That is a long time to spend in a life raft and you will definitely need water. Without water, you'll be lucky to last more than two or three days. Without food, that's okay. You can burn off a bit of fat, maybe some of that Christmas weight that you've been carrying around for a while and you can probably survive several weeks. But without water, that's simply not the case. So it's a very important item. Now I mentioned SOLAS before or the Safety of Life at Sea Convention. It's a very important convention that came about just after the Titanic sank. Really speaking, it came about because the Titanic sank. So many, many safety rules that govern the maritime industry come from SOLAS. Even the color of the canopy on the inside is dictated by SOLAS. You can't paint the inside of this canopy a bright neon green. The reason is that the inside of the canopy is supposed to be a comfortable color or non-offensive. And that's because you might be spending a lot of time inside the life raft. You don't really want to be bombarded by neon colors if you're living in the life raft. Now this one's a sort of mustard yellow, which to me is slightly offensive, but somehow it seems to work here. And I assume it is a Solas approved color. The canopy itself is actually a double canopy and you'll have a layer of insulation between the outer and inner canopies. This will help you keep the heat in when it's cold outside and keep the inside cool when it's very hot outside, such as when the life raft is sitting in direct sunlight. Remember also that the water is going to reflect the sunlight and so it's important that you can seal up as much of the life raft as possible, not just to keep out the wind and the waves, and the seawater, but also to shield yourself from the sun. So we've talked about some of the design features associated with this life raft. Let's go and have a look now quickly at some of the equipment that you're likely to carry.